This video assumes you have seen the basic Exacto knife safety video tutorial. If not, return to the wiki to see it, then come on back to learn how to cut out a large scale print created from your never ending file. In a live studio version of this course, you will create a physical book from your never ending portfolio file. In an online version of the course, this is not required, but you might be intrigued enough to make a book after the course is complete. Either way, if you have a book print, you need to know how to fold it, trim it, and give it a cover. To make your book, you will need a book print, of course, complete with crop and fold marks, a sharp craft knife like this number 11 exacto blade and handle, plenty of replacements to change out dull blades, a sharps disposal container or some masking tape to wrap disposed blades, a metal straight edge like this T-square, a cutting mat like this one that can handle your longest cut, a stiff cardboard material for a cover, an optional material to laminate on your cover. A mounting adhesive. Adhesive transfer tape is a clean but expensive option. Spray adhesive works well but can be quite messy. A masking material like masking tape if you use spray adhesive. An overspray material like craft paper or newsprint. We offer access to tools and craft paper in the campus maker space if you don't have these things handy. We don't supply cardboard, laminating materials, or adhesive, but these can be easily and inexpensively obtained at an art or craft store. Throughout the process of cutting, you want to follow best practice cutting techniques learned in the Exacto knife safety video. Review them if necessary. If you've trimmed a large print with crop marks, many of the techniques are similar for the book, but there is enough different here that you want to pay close attention. For example, the book has crop marks, but it also has fold marks to tell you where to fold the pages for the kind of accordion book we've designed. So that you can know where to fold, you create the folds before you trim the overall border. The problem with folding this very thick paper as if it were conventional paper is 1, it's really hard to get a fold to line up with the fold mark, and 2, the paper, being quite stiff, will crack and damage the ink surface. So just trying to fold it is not enough. To solve this, we are going to make a special kind of cut called a score. A score cuts the surface of the paper only, in a controlled way, so that a fold will meet up with the mark precisely and will also make a very neat peak fold on the ink side. A very light but persistent pressure with the knife will break the surface tension of the paper, then when you pick it up and fold it, the fold will easily follow the score. Practice making a score several times on some scrap if you need to get a feel for it. You always make a score on the side of the paper that folds outward. In an accordion book, the outward direction alternates from the front to the back of the book. I call a fold on the back of the print a valley, and a fold on the front a peak. Be careful to pattern your valleys and peaks so that the book will fold in an orientation that allows you to mount a cover. In the book we've designed, between the first and second page is a valley, then we alternate peak and valley. At the last page, between 6 and 7, it's a peak. Remember that the front face of page 7 is where a cover goes, and that is why it's blank. So our first, third, and fifth fold scores, starting from the front of the book, will be valley scores. On a valley score, the cut happens on the back of the print, but there are no marks on the back to indicate where to place the score. This is an easy problem to solve, and requires no measuring or marking. Simply take your knife and carefully puncture the paper at the top and bottom fold marks, orienting the blade parallel with the mark. This telegraphs the marks precisely to the back of the paper. Turn your paper over, and align your straight edge as you did for your large print. Place the tip of the knife in one transferred mark and move the straight edge to it. Then do this for the second mark, checking it a couple of times to make sure there is no edge shifting. Now perform the scores. You want to score all the way across the paper, from edge to edge, so it will fold cleanly from top to bottom. Test these scores by doing enough of a fold to see that it's deep enough to break the surface tension of the paper. If it's not, align the straight edge and give it another light score. Flatten the book when you turn it over to the front, and repeat scores for the second, fourth, and sixth folds. Again test the scores by giving each just enough of a fold to see that it's deep enough to break the surface tension of the paper. Flatten the book out again, face up, 
And now we'll trim the borders. Start with the two long trim cuts. The book is long, but it is short enough to reach from crop mark to crop mark with a yardstick or meter stick length straight edge. We cut in a manner identical to the cutting technique for the large print project. For brevity, we won't repeat that demo here, but if you need to review the technique, go back to the wiki and open the large print cutting video. After the book is trimmed, we will perform more aggressive folds to flatten the book as closed. Take your time and work the fold slowly to a full fold. It helps to fold them first about halfway, then see how the book stands up like a wall. If you see misalignments, a gap, say where the book edge should be in contact with a flat table surface, the fibers of the paper will allow you to wiggle the fold a bit to align. You don't want to do this aggressively, but paper fibers do have enough forgiveness in them that if your scores weren't absolutely precise, you can wiggle the pages until they align as full folds. So, ideally, your book pages will fold flat. But we know that the paper roll creates tension in the paper and there may be some curl. Don't worry about that. It will persist for a time in a freshly made book but over time the tension in the paper will flatten it out. One thing that really helps this is to create a cover. Now, the cover is a totally tactile creation and is not dependent on a digital file. But you don't need to depend on measuring, marking and cutting to make a precise cover for your book. We'll use the book itself as a template. So, let's cut our cardboard. In this sample, the board I'm using is a museum mounting board. I like museum board because it's not necessary to laminate a finished material onto it if I don't wish to. It's already got a nice finish, and a selection of muted tones like white, antique white, gray, black, or natural tan. I'll use a four-ply museum board because this is thick enough to give the book structure. However, it's also a good material as a base for a laminated finish material, which we'll discuss soon. When you purchase your cardboard, it comes with what we call a factory edge, and we don't want to use that edge. Instead, cut about a half inch or so away from the edge to create a new crisp place to start your cover. This will take maybe a dozen draws with a knife against your straight edge. Let the knife do most of the work. Now take the book and lay an edge against the cut you made. On the perpendicular edge of this page, press two marks into the board with your knife tip, and remove the book. This is much better than marking with a pencil, because you can align the straight edge to the knife depressions more easily than the mark. Simply put the knife tip back in the depression, and slide the straight edge against the blade, then repeat for the other depression. When aligned, cut this perpendicular edge all the way through, again performing several draws of the knife. Now comes a trick for the third and fourth cuts. Align the page up with the corner and two edges you cut. Instead of creating a knife mark right against the third page edge, take the scrap you cut away to create the fresh edge and use it as a spacer to make the book page slightly larger than the page. The thickness of your cover material is enough of an offset to guarantee the cover will adequately encase the pages, but not such a large offset that your book will be uncomfortable standing open, a trick we'll see at the end of this demo. Anyway, Make a pair of knife marks offset by the width of the material from the third edge and perform a cut. Then do the same thing for the fourth edge. See how this very slightly larger cover relates well to the page? Do this again to create a second cover, though you may use the first cover as a template to create knife marks, making the second one a bit easier to generate.
Now I could choose to simply mount this nice material to the book, but let's say I want to enhance the book with a laminated surface material. There are many surface materials to choose from, but do be careful to pick a material thin enough that it can laminate to the board in the manner we're about to demonstrate. Good materials include Japanese rice papers, Kansan colored papers, book binding cloth, or book binding leather. Regarding those last two, it's tempting to use regular cloth or leather to do this, but they are simply too thick for the job. You can find these special materials online or at an art or craft store. For this demo, I'm using a simple paper as an example of a thin material. I'm going to show you a technique called gift wrapping, and if you inspect a nicely bound book from your library shelf, this is exactly the same kind of technique used there. So first, we want to trim the surface material, so it's about an inch or inch and a half larger than the cardboard. I don't need to measure, I can really just eyeball this. Now we want to apply an adhesive to the surface material. Adhesive transfer tape is cleaner but expensive. I'm going to demonstrate a spray mount technique. We're using the same spray technique demonstrated in the large print mounting demonstration video, so review that if you need a refresher. Here, though, the scale is quite smaller. After I spray the surface material, I return to my cutting station and lay the material down sprayed side up, of course. Now eyeballing to keep it relatively straight and even, I lay the cardboard on the material and press it down. Before we start folding the material over for the gift wrapping technique we need to trim away the corners. First place your knife blade right at a corner, then cut away from that corner at approximately a 45 degree angle. You don't need to measure and it's okay if it's approximate. Do this at all four corners. Next, cut material away from that first cut, starting approximately the thickness of the material away from the corner. This does not need to be precise. Cut away a triangle of material at an angle somewhat less than a perpendicular to the first cut, so that the paper will fold over itself and hide the backing board. Do this at every corner, in both directions away from the first cut, until you've cut away eight small triangles and you have something that looks like a non-uniform octagon. Using the edge of the cover itself as a folding mechanism, pull the cover up toward you. Use pressure down on the cover edge to get the paper to adhere to the edge, then keep pressure on the inside edge, and fold the rest of this flap to adhere to the inside of the cover. Do this for all four flaps. Now you've successfully gift wrapped a book cover. You may have tiny dog ears of material at the corners. You can trim these away with a knife. After we've wrapped the two covers, we can adhere them to the book. Use some masking tape to protect the edges of the book from overspray. You can, if you wish, make small pencil or knife marks to guide the placement of your masking tape to maintain a border of about 1 8 inch or so. Put masking all around each interior edge of the cover, but don't fold it over the edge. Go to your spray station and use a fresh piece of craft paper to spray the first cover. When done, return to your cutting station and remove the masking. This is the trickiest part of the process. You want to align the edges of the book page so that they sit just inside the cover as uniformly as possible. The cover should be laying on the table, and the book page is placed on it. 
If you don't trust your alignment abilities here, practice with some scrap material beforehand to get a feel for the material. You don't really get a second chance with this, so take your time. Repeat the process for the other cover, and you have a complete, physical book, published and built by you.